I think that high reliability became a kind of what, a catchphrase, you know, in the last couple of years, I'd say, in in healthcare, in healthcare quality and healthcare improvement, um, and in in the circles in which we in, in which I travel, everybody was talking about. Everybody was talking about becoming a high reliable, an HRO, a high reliability organization, um, and, and it, like a lot of things in improvement, and it, you know, you could distill the methods and the ideas down to a set of tools. Uh, this happens a lot with lean. It happens with the model for improvement, with PDSA cycles. You know, it becomes about the tool set, you know, A3 thinking, you know, A3 approaches to whatever, like in the lean world. You know, equivalently, in the high reliability world, this became about these, these concepts that that uh, folks have started to talk about. Um, and I think that in many cases, when it when it becomes when we toolify improvement thinking, or when we when we make these concepts into when we reduce them down to a set of you know tools in a in a toolbox that you deploy uh, you know accordingly to according to the problem that you're experiencing, it, it sometimes misses the cultural transformation point that you have to undergo in order to become truly highly reliable in this case, or to become a real improvement focused organization or quality focused organization. It's not just about whether you can operationalize a PDSA cycle. You know, that's not the whole story. You know, that's not just about whether you can, whether you know what those three questions are that lead off the model for improvement. It's about whether your, you know, whether your approach to problem solving is distributed throughout the enterprise and whether you have a structured way of learning that's embedded in the way that you run your operation, whether you run the way you run your organization. Thank you.